Kodak's T-Max films get a lot of hate from the film photography community, and I don't really think that that's fair. The films often get criticized for looking a bit too digital, and while I will tend to agree that these films are ones with very little personality and are actually quite bland, I see that as a good thing. You see, if you take your time to properly develop your enlargements in the darkroom or to edit your scans, you'll find that this is an ultra high performance film that delivers outstanding image quality. Kodak T-Max 100 is a 100 ISO black and white panchromatic negative film. It's part of Kodak's T-Max series of films, which is a line of film stocks that features three different variants at different ISO speeds. A 100, a 400, and a 3200 variant of this film can be had. It's also available in a variety of different formats to suit just about any camera. You've got 35mm cassettes, 120 medium format rolls, as well as 4x5 and 8x10 sheet film options available. It's also also, on the more inexpensive side among Kodak's films, on B&H Photo it's available right now for $10.99. The film was originally released in 1986 along with its 400 speed sibling and has been updated several times since then. Kodak T-Max films, one of their main deciding characteristics that sets them apart from other films in Kodak's catalog, like the Tri-X films for example, is the fact that these are T-grain films, which means they feature tabular grain. Tabular grain is different from classical grain in that it lays flat against the film surface and has a larger light sensitive surface area with a smaller volume compared to standard cubic grain silver crystals. The benefits of that are higher resolution and sharpness with ultra fine grain. Kodak puts finest grain branding on their box for TMX 100 and it's not really a lie either. Now this is a film stock that ever since it was first released has had its lovers and its haters. Kodak recommends that you use their T-Max developer, which was specifically designed to accompany the T-Max films in order to get the best quality results out of your rolls of T-Max. You don't have to, the reality is this is a black and white negative film and you can really treat it as you would any other black and white negative film and use your preferred chemistry. For example, my preference is for Ilford ID11, that's the developer I use for pretty much anything, and that's what I used in this case as well with a standard inversion technique. I was really pleased with the results that I got. I scanned all of the images using my Epson V600 with the Epson Scan 2 software and was also more than pleased with the results that I got. All of the rolls of T-Max 100 that I've had over the last couple of years, I've shot using my Pentax Spotmatic with the 55mm f1.8 Super Tacomar lens, which while being a reasonably sharp lens does have a little bit less contrast when shot wide open, which is something that you should bear in mind. One description of Kodak T-Max that I've seen is that it looks a bit like a color digital photograph that's been turned black and white, and the film is often heavily criticized for its withdrawn and somewhat subdued characteristics. In all of my tests, Kodak T-Max develop with incredibly fine grain. I mean very, very fine grain to the point where there practically wasn't any at all. And in my tests, the film also exhibited quite excellent dynamic range, retaining a ton of highlight detail even in situations where I was deliberately exposing for the shadows. While I wouldn't exactly say this is the sharpest film that I've ever run across that could be partially due to my chemistry that I used when developing it, it was more than enough for me and I was really pleased with the amount of clarity and detail in these images throughout the highlight shadow and mid-tone regions. Kodak does say that this film has an excellent exposure latitude, but I found in my my experience, the best results came exposing this film as accurately as possible at 100 ISO and overexposing by one to two stops in high contrast backlit situations. I'd say one of the principal characteristics of this film that really sets it apart from others is its really restrained and smooth contrast curve all the way throughout the range. In conclusion, Kodak T-Max gets a lot more hate than I think it deserves. It is a superb, high-performance professional film that delivers really high quality images and is actually also a fascinating technical achievement. If you look back at the time before digital photography took over and film photography was the only photography that existed, avoiding grain in images was something that photographers had on their mind very much in the same way that today we try to avoid digital noise when we're taking 
taking photos using a DSLR or mirrorless camera. We tend to forget this as photographers who learned to shoot digital. When Kodak T-Max was brought onto the market, it represented a way of being able to capture high quality images that were also practically grainless while delivering excellent resolution and sharpness at workable speeds. The ultra smooth, flat and almost digital like contrast of this film is often criticized. But I think that's missing the point because that's exactly what Kodak T-Max was intended to be like. If you're a photographer who learned to use digital cameras, when you shoot a raw photo and you bring it onto your computer and it looks flat and a bit dull and boring and maybe doesn't have contrast as much as you would want it to, you don't even think twice about it because you expect to have to develop that raw image into the final result that you want. Kodak T-Max films are basically designed to give us that same ability but for film photography, allowing us to tweak and adjust and enhance the contrast as we see fit and as much as we need, either in the darkroom or after scanning digitally. It provides us with the latitude to be able to do this with incredibly high resolution and somewhat flat negatives that retain an absolute ton of detail. It's really easy to enhance contrast in the areas that we want it. It's a lot harder to undo something that's already in the negative. Kodak T-Max 100 may not be my favorite film stock, but when I'm looking to capture images with as much image quality as I can possibly manage, Kodak T-Max is a film that I really love to work with. T-Max, in my opinion, lends itself very well to all forms of photography, including landscape photography, still life photography, and macro photography. If you've avoided Kodak T-Max films in the past because you've seen a lot of the negative things that are being said about the film, maybe this could be your inspiration to go and give it a try. Who knows, you might end up absolutely loving this film. That's all that I have to say for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you think I've deserved it. Subscribe if you think I've earned it, and I will see you next time.